We have been studying about the devil being the greatest imitator of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so far we have seen various ways in which the devil imitates Jesus Christ in order to deceive God's people and in order to destroy the lives of Christians and unbelievers as well. Today we are going to look at probably the greatest deception of the devil ever in the history of mankind. And today we are going to talk about a counterfeit Bible. A counterfeit Bible. Just as God has a Bible, just as God has his own words, the devil has a counterfeit Bible. And we're going to look at that today. And this Bible study probably would be the most important one that I have done uh, on YouTube. And I'm going to request you to please pay attention uh, to this very important Bible study and the Lord willing we are going to divide this Bible study into at least two or maybe even three parts and try and understand this subject perfectly as best as we can and see how the devil imitates God's word and the Holy Scriptures. The Bible is very clear about what God thinks about his word. Look at 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 16. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. The Bible says that scripture and all scripture is given by inspiration. Of course, the theological term for inspiration is God breathed. And the Bible says that the scriptures have been given by the breath of God. And it is profitable for all these things. The Bible says in the book of Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12, For the word of God is quick and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit, and joints and marrow, and is a deserter of the intents and thoughts of the heart. So the Bible calls itself scripture and word of God. And this word of God, remember, is with a small w not a capital w a lot of christians and even theologians write the word of god with a capital w in the bible the capital w is used only for the lord jesus christ the incarnate word but for the written word it's always a small w so the scriptures and the word or the word of god are given by inspiration by the breath of god in 2 Peter chapter 1 and verse 21, the Bible says that prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake. It was given by inspiration through holy men, and these holy men spoke the word of God. It came by holy men who, uh, who spoke the word of God. That's how inspiration comes. So 2 Peter chapter 1 verse 21 clearly tells us how this inspiration is given. Prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. So inspiration of the scriptures is a very, very important doctrine in the Bible. And the Bible talks about its own inspiration, not just in these verses that I've mentioned, but in various other places. In Psalm 12, Verses 6, verse 6, we'll look at verse 7 later, but in verse 6 it says, The words of the Lord are pure words, as silver tried in a furnace of earth, purified seven times. Now there are two things I want you to make note of in this passage, that is Psalm 12 and verse 6. That together, the scripture and the word of God are called firstly, the words of God. I want you to notice the plural word words. It's not just the word of God, but the scripture or the word of God contains the words of God. And that's very important for you to understand. You will see why a little bit later. In, Psalm, uh, in the same uh, Psalm, Psalm 12 verse 6, he goes on to say that the words of God are pure words. As silver tried in a furnace of earth, purified seven times. So the thing that God wants us to understand about the scripture or the word of God is that it's not only given by inspiration, but he wants us to understand the purity, 
the purity of the words of God. The words of God are pure words. In Psalm 119 verse 140, the psalmist says, Thy words are very pure, therefore thy servant loveth it. The purity of the scriptures, the purity of the words of God are emphasized in the Bible time and again. You make note of that. And again in Psalm, uh, in, in Proverbs 30 and verse 5, in the first part of that verse it says, Every word of God is pure. That's why the words plural have to be noted down. Every word of God is pure. Not just some words, not just many words, but every single word of God is pure. That's why in Matthew chapter 4 and verse 4, remember what Jesus said. He said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word, every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. So the scriptures are not just a, a book which contains the fundamental doctrines of Christianity. The scriptures are not just a book which uh, is like a guide which will guide you in this life. But the scriptures or the word of God contain the words of God. And every word of God is pure and man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Remember also Jesus said, Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words, plural, shall not pass away. The emphasis on the plural words and the importance of every single word in the scripture is seen very clearly in the Bible. Jesus said that even a jot or a tittle shall not uh, be left unfulfilled. Everything in the Bible is important. God lays much emphasis not just on doctrines, but by but on every single word that he gave by inspiration. Okay, and we are going to look at this subject a little bit more uh, uh, in detail a little later in this Bible study. In 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse 23, the Bible again reminds us of the importance of the scriptures or the words of God. The Bible says there that uh, being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. Salvation is through the scriptures. Man cannot be saved unless the scriptures are there in this world. And that's why it is very important for us to understand that God has given the scriptures, the word of God, which contains words, plural. And these words are very, very important because through these words, salvation is given to mankind. A lot of times Christians talk so much about the gospel. But where does the gospel come from? It comes from the scripture. It is recorded in the scriptures. Remember when Paul talks about the gospel in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 3 and 4, he lays emphasis on the words according to the scriptures. The scriptures are important for God. And that's why they should be important to us. Christians today have a very casual approach and a very casual attitude towards the scriptures. But God says every word of God is pure and man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Even if Christians do not know the importance of the scriptures, the devil certainly knows the importance of it. That's why he counterfeits the scriptures. And we're going to look at how he does it. Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 17. For we are not as many which corrupt the word of God, but as of sincerity, but as of God, in the sight of God speak we in Christ. There are people who corrupt the word of God. That's what the devil is uh, doing, corrupting. That's the first thing he does. He corrupts the word of God. And he doesn't do it himself. He uses scholars. He uses people. He uses Christians to do this work of corruption for him. Look at also 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 2. But have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully. Deceit or deception. That's what the devil does. The first thing he does 
is he corrupts the word of God, then he uses the words of God for deception. For deception. Look at 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse 16. As also in all his epistles, speaking in them of these things, in which are some things hard to be understood, which they that are unlearned and unstable rest, as they do also the other scriptures unto their own destruction. Now Peter is very clear here. He says there are people whose business is to rest the word of God. They twist it beyond recognition. And that's their work. And look at all the words associated with this corruption of the word of God. In 2 Corinthians 2.17 he says, We are not as many which corrupt the word of God, but insincerity. That means the people who corrupt the word of God are insincere. And then in 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 2 he says, Renounce the hidden things of dishonesty. People who use the word of God deceitfully for deception are dishonest people. And then here in 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse 16, again he talks about how they that are unlearned and unstable do this work of resting the scriptures. They twist the scriptures beyond recognition. They destroy the words of God. So this much should be clear in your mind, Christian, that God has his pure words. God lays a great emphasis on his words. And the devil equally tries to destroy the words of God. He does it by corruption, deception, and by the resting of the word of God. Now, another very uh, uh, clear proof that the devil's main target for destruction is the word of God is to be found in the warnings that God places in the Bible against meddling or uh, fooling around with the word of God. There are three clear warnings given in the beginning of the Bible, in the middle of the Bible, and at the end of the Bible. Look at Deuteronomy chapter 4 and verse 2. Ye shall not add unto the word which I command you, neither shall ye diminish aught from it, that ye may keep the commandments of the Lord your God which I command you. Look at this. He very clearly says what you should not do. He says, do not add to the word of God. And do not diminish. That means subtract. He says do not add to the word of God. Do not diminish from the word of God. Because keeping of the commandments or obeying God depends on keeping the word of God pure. If you add or diminish from the word of God, you will lose what God wants you to know. You will not have all the words that God wants you to read and understand and obey. Look at now Proverbs chapter 30. We'll read verses 5 and 6. Every word of God is pure. We have already read that. He is a shield unto them that put their trust in him. Add thou not unto his words, lest he reprove thee, and thou be found a liar. Do not add to the words of God. It says in the middle of the Bible there in the book of Proverbs. Now look at Revelation, the last book of the Bible. Revelation chapter 22, the last chapter of the Bible and verse 19. And if any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life and out of the holy city and from the things which are written in this book. If any man take away from the words, look at the plural there, words. Do not mess with the words of God, not even with a single word, not with a single letter. That's how important the words of God are to him. So he says, do not diminish, do not take away, do not subtract from the words of God. So these warnings are placed in the Bible because God knows that the devil's main target for destruction is the Bible. And he uses people to do that. So he puts these warnings there and he says, do not add to my words, do not diminish or do not take away from my words because God lays so much of importance on the scriptures. The devil's main target is the Bible. The, great, the devil's greatest enemy on the earth is the word of God. A lot of times Christians think they are so important to the devil that the devil's whole focus is on them 24 hours a day. And... Uh, 365 days a year. 
they think they are very important to the devil because uh, you know they think the devil is intimidated by the ministry they are doing or by their praying let me tell you this the devil's main focus is not you Christian the devil's main focus is the Word of God which contains the words of God plural and that's what he tries to attack and destroy and that's what he's been doing from the beginning of time as we are going to look at in a moment so the devil perverts the words of God and he does it through the agency of man never forget that just because somebody uh, sits in judgment over the word of God claiming to have a great knowledge of Hebrew, Greek and all the cognate languages because he claims to <clears throat> be an expert at these languages. It does not mean he is a man of God. It does not mean that he is doing for the benefit of God's people. The devil could be using him to destroy the words of God and we're going to look at that. So let's begin at the very beginning and see how the Bible makes it very clear to us that the devil's greatest target is the word of God. Turn with me to Genesis chapter 3. And verse 1 Genesis chapter 3 and verse 1 we will read all the way down to verse 5 we'll begin with verse 1 Genesis chapter 3 verse 1 now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made and he said unto the woman yea had God said you shall not eat of every tree of the garden here you have the devil appearing for the very first time in the Bible and he's there trying to tempt Eve to disobey God and to eat the fruit of the knowledge of good and evil. So how does the devil begin? What are the first words of the devil? Look at that. Yea, hath God said. He doesn't begin very interestingly with the word no. But he begins with the word yea which means yes. A lot of Christians nowadays talk about positive thinking. They say, be positive, think positively and all that. You know who the greatest positive thinker in the world is? It is the devil. He began the first words he ever spoke to a human being with a positive word. He said, yes. Did you ever notice that? He is the greatest positive thinker. The Bible is a very negative book. It's a very, very negative book. Always keep that in mind. It will help you. The Bible is not a positive book, it's a negative book. The devil is a positive thinker and he begins positively talking to Eve. Uh, you know, he doesn't say to Eve, no, 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 Eve, you're wrong. He doesn't say that. He says, yea, had God said. So he's a positive thinker, but the thing that he's doing there is that he is firstly questioning the word of God. He is questioning the word of God. He says, Yea, hath God said. Did God really say that? Doesn't that ring a bell somewhere for you? If you've been to Bible colleges, you will always be bombarded with this. That the King James Bible has errors in it. And God did not put those words in this book. These were additions, these were subtractions and all sorts of things. Uh, you know, these people try to brainwash the students into believing. I remember my first systematic theology class in my Bachelor of Divinity course. The professor walked in, a very erudite man, a man full of knowledge. And the first thing he did was he attacked the King James Bible in the class. He said, oh, we are not going to use that Bible with the these and thous and all that majestic language. We are going to stick to a good old... Uh, uh, NIV or something like that. I was shocked. He thinks that he's a big scholar because he has uh, the knowledge to attack the King James Bible, which he doesn't. He thinks he has, but he doesn't. But that's how it is. Questioning the word of God. That's how the devil began. He said, yea, had God said? He put a doubt in the mind of Eve about what God said. That is about the word of God or the words of God. Then secondly, now from here Eve begins. So this is how he influenced Eve to work on the word of God. This is how he influenced her. Look at this in verse 2. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. 
what is Eve doing there? What did God say to her and what is Eve saying? God said to her in chapter or to, uh, to Adam in chapter 2 and verse 16 of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat. See the word uh, freely here. God said of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat. The word freely is important because salvation is free. What God gives to mankind is free of cost. And God said to Adam and Eve, you can eat freely of, the, of all the trees of the garden, he says. But Eve says, and the woman said unto the servant, we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. She omits the word freely. So that means she has diminished. The devil questioned the words of God, but by omitting the word freely, she diminished from the word of God. Now look at verse 3. But of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it. God never said that. Eve adds, here she omits, but now she adds to the word of God. Uh, it says, uh, neither shall ye touch it. God never said, don't touch it. God said, don't eat it. That's all. He never said, don't touch it. So Eve, under the influence of the great positive thinker, starts working on the words of God and starts adding and omitting from the words of God. Now look at verse uh, 3 again. She says, uh, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. What's she doing? She has changed. She has changed the word of God. God never said, lest ye die. God said, in the day thou shalt eat of it, thou shalt surely die. But Eve changed the words of God. And she said, lest ye die. God never said, lest ye die. He said, thou shalt surely die. Now look at verse 4. From here, the devil begins his attack again on the word of God. What does he do? He says in verse 4, And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. So now the devil uh, denies the word of God. The first thing he did, he questioned the word of God, and now he outrightly denies what God has said. He says to Eve, No, this is wrong. This is not the correct translation. This is not what the original Hebrew said. That's the kind of thing, you know, that's where this all comes from. Now look at verse 5. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. So the last thing that the devil does is misinterprets the word of God. Misinterprets the word of God. These are the three things that the devil does. He questions the word of God, he denies it, and he misinterprets it. Whereas Eve does these three things. She omits from the word of God, she adds to the word of God, and she change the, changes the word of God. This is very, very clear and simple to understand, brethren. Very, very simple to understand. That from the beginning, the devil's main target has been to destroy the word of God. How did he do that with Eve? He questioned the word of God. He denied the word of God and he misinterpreted the word of God. God never, uh, you know, God never said ye shall be as gods. He just said ye shall know good and evil. That's all. But the devil misinterpreted the words of God. And under the influence of the devil, just like the translators in these modern translation committees, under the influence of the great positive thinker, what do they do? They omit from the word of God, they add to the word of God, and they change the word of God. In 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 4, it says, For if he that cometh preacheth another Jesus, whom we have not preached, or if ye receive another spirit, which ye have not received, or another gospel, which ye have not accepted, ye might well bear with him. Look at that another gospel that Paul talks about. That is a corruption of the word of God. And he clarifies it. Look at Galatians chapter 1 verses 6 and 7. I marvel that you were so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel, which is not another. 
but there'd be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. This is what the Bible teaches us about the devil's motive, about the devil's greatest purpose in imitating Jesus Christ, in imitating the scriptures. He does it in order to pervert the words of Christ, the words of God, in order to pervert the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ so that man would not be saved. And Christians don't see that. They act like the devil has absolutely no interest in the Bible issue. They behave like the devil has no interest whatsoever in translation committees. That's exactly where he can be found. You want to find the devil? You don't go to a pub. You don't go to a theater. You don't go to a, a tavern. These are not the places where you find the devil. The devil is found in translation committees because that's where he is doing his most important work in destroying the words of God so that mankind would remain in blindness, so that mankind could be destroyed when the words of God are destroyed. And we're going to look at how he has done this in history. So far we have seen very briefly what the devil does in the scriptures with the scriptures. But now we are going to see what he did with the scriptures in history.